I was working on a video late one night when my eyes beheld this eerie sight. All these monster movies from their shelves began to rise, and then suddenly, to my demise, I did the mash. mash. Scotty Six's Monster Mash. He did the mash. It was a graveyard smash. He did the mash. He got on with the flash. He did the mash. Scott 86's Monster Man. Out from his coffin, Scott's voice did ring. It seemed he was troubled by just one thing. He looked at his computer. It started to crash. He said, fuck this shit. Fuck it up the ass. He did the mash. Scott 86's Monster Mash. He did the mash. It was the graveyard. He did the mash. It got on with a flash. He did the mash. This Monster Mash. Oh. Monster Mash Monster Mash Got it easy to Monster Mash Monster Mash Monster Mash Monster Mash Monster Mash Welcome back boils and ghouls to another exciting Monster Mash Monster Mash 3 <laughs> What's up you guys? Welcome back to Monster Mash 3 Another another badass year of some spooky episodes, all a part of the Monster Mash. Scott86 here, and we're going to kick off Monster Mash with the first episode. That's right, the very first episode of Monster Mash 3. Let's review the universal classic, Dracula. Starring the one and only Bella Lugosi as Dracula. I loved it. I loved it as a kid. I grew up loving Dracula. The reason that people know Dracula, I feel like, to me, is because of this movie. Because a lot of the times when people quote, I want to suck your blood and all that, they're doing that Romanian Dracula, Bela Lugosi accent. The movie starts and we have this carriage going down this creepy hill and there it's filled with a couple of people. One of the people in there, his name's Renfield. He's one of the main characters, played by Dwight Fry, awesome actor. He was in Frankenstein, he was in Bride of Frankenstein, he's just all over the place. Whenever they finally reach the town that they're driving to by horseback, you know what I'm saying, it's like a carriage with horses and all, you know, it's real old timey. They all get out of the carriage, the, the townspeople greet them. Renfield makes the statement that he's going to the Castle Dracula. That's right, the Castle Dracula? One of the people, or one of the townsfolk, this guy, he tells him that don't go to the Castle Dracula, you know what I'm saying? It's dangerous. You should not go there. Don't do it. You know, it's a bad idea, all this shit. And everybody's basically just trying to warn him. You know, all the people are appalled when he says he's going to the Castle Dracula. And right before he gets in, this old woman stops him, and she puts his cross necklace around his neck, you know, and she's like, for your mother's sake, you know, and she gives him this cross for good luck, I guess. Alright, so he gets to the other carriage, and he notices the sketchy guy that's driving the uh, carriage, you know, the, uh, the cabbie or whatever you want to call him. He's like really weird looking, but uh, if you know Bella Lugosi, you can clearly see that that's Dracula right there driving the carriage. A little while into the trip, he looks out the window to see, uh, to check on the cabbie guy, and it's just a bat flying over the horses. It's insane. Okay, so they get to the castle of Dracula. He gets out, goes to thank the guy, the cabbie guy, for bringing him, you know, and there's nobody there. He looks up at the castle doors and they just start to creepily open. It's really, really creepy. Renfield waltzes right in like he owns a joint. You know, he's standing there looking around and all of a sudden, Bell Lugosi, Dracula himself, comes walking down this giant spiral staircase. He gets to the bottom and he greets him. I am Count Dracula, you know, and he like introduces himself. They get acquainted and then they start to walk up the stairs. Dracula stops midway up the stairs and he hears some wolves or something howling at the moon and he's like, Children of the night, what beautiful music they make. It's all such an awesome, epic line in film history. But anyways, they press on up the stairs and there's this giant spider web blocking the way. 
Dracula somehow just walks right through it, like a ghost, like nothing. There's, not, there's nothing there, you know, he just walks right through it. But there's this giant spider web just, like, covering the whole staircase, you know, at the top. Mr. Renfield's like, what the fuck? You know what I'm saying? How'd you do that? And he takes his cane and everything, he's, like, trying to poke through the spider web, and it's a legit spider web, you know, so he has to, like, tear it down, basically, to walk through. You know, Dracula shows him around the castle, and they get to this room, and he sits him down, you know, he gives him some uh, food, you know, he wines him and dines him, but little does Mr. Renfield know that the wine that he's drinking is actually Dracula's blood. Okay, so after he drinks Dracula's blood, Dracula hits him with this trance where he's like, he's now one of Dracula's tortured servants. It goes down to the bottom of the ship and it shows Renfield and he's like crouched over Dracula's coffin. He's like, Master, wake up. We're here. And Dracula basically, he kills everybody, you know. He sucks all their blood, I guess, I don't know, but he kills everybody on board. Then goes back down into his coffin. So the next day, the ship crashes, crash lands onto some shore or something, and these people go onto the ship to explore it and to see what happened, you know. And they go down into the uh, into the bottom part of the ship where the coffin is, and they open up the door, and Renfield's like just staring, sitting there staring, looking up at him with this like really super creepy ass like cheesing grin. After they discover the creepy ass Renfield, like, fucking tweaking out in the bottom of the ship, they send his ass off to some psychiatric clinic, you know, a uh, nut house, basically. So then Dracula finally reaches London. He comes up on this poor girl that's trying to sell, like, flowers or something, I don't remember. He basically grabs her, bites her, and takes her into the night as well. Okay, so basically Dracula goes to some, like, opera hall or something, and he meets this girl there. They leave, you know, go home, she goes to sleep, and then the same night, in a room, a bat comes through the window, turns into Dracula, and he creeps up to her bed, and that's where he bites her in the neck. Okay, so Mr. Helsing comes in to just kind of talk to the girl and see what's going on with her because she's been acting really weird ever since she met Dracula, you know, so they're just kind of worried about her. What do you know, Dracula comes over. They're all talking, everybody's bullshitting. Van Helsing takes out this mirror. He directs it towards Dracula whenever he's talking and he sees that he has no reflection. This is like only moments after he finds that she has bite marks on her neck, so, you, so he's convinced and he knows that Dracula is the one that did this and he knows what he is. Okay, so after he realizes that he casts no reflection, he confronts him, goes up to him with the mirror, and he's like, hey, check this out. Dracula looks down, and he sees the mirror, and instantly just knocks it, like, out of Van Helsing's hand, you know? He's like, get that shit out of here, and he takes off. After Dracula leaves, the woman, for some reason, goes after him. I don't understand why. But he wraps his cape around her, and then they're off, you know? Gone into the night. Okay, so Van Helsing, the boyfriend, the doctor, they all go out to look for the girl. They find her, take her back to the place, and then you see Dracula just like lurking behind the tree. It was so creepy. All right, so we fast forward to later on in the movie. Van Helsing's just kind of doing his own thing at home. All of a sudden, Dracula comes into the room and tries to attack him by like doing the eye thing, you know what I'm saying? He's trying to put it, lock him into that spell, and he almost gives in. But then Helsing pulls out a cross, you know, and Dracula's like, oh shit, you know, like right as he started to lunge towards him, he's like, oh fuck, you know, so the, the cross made him weak, and he got scared and took off again. Okay, so then we go to the scene where the woman that got bit by Dracula, the one that he met at the opera hall or whatever, she's like talking to her boyfriend, Jonathan, I think was his name or something like that. She's talking to her boyfriend, and um... She's obviously a vampire, too, you know. She got bit by Dracula. She's just sitting there staring at the dude's neck. She goes in closer and closer, and then all of a sudden she, like, lunges towards him, and he gets the hell out of the way. And he's, you know, he's like, what the hell are you doing? You know, and then Helsing comes in there, and he's like, what the hell's going on? The dude pulls out a cross and shows his girlfriend the cross, and she's like, oh, shit, you know. She's definitely a vampire, too, and now her, her boyfriend knows it. Okay, so basically Dracula captures the girl, 
brings her back to the castle. Renfield takes off after him too, you know, because he wants to like prove his master that he's the man for the job, basically. You know, he has to be there for him, you know, so he chases after him as well, goes to the castle too, goes up the castle stairs. Dracula is just like disgusted to the sight of the guy. Goes up to him, grabs him, and just like throws him down the stairs. It was fucking intense. The doctor and Helsing are hot on Dracula's trail. I mean, they're breaking into the door trying to get in there. They get in there and Dracula sees him coming and he takes off with the girl. You know, he's like holding her in his arms and like running with her. Brings her down to the basement. They chase him down there, open up the coffin. Van Helsing's like got this giant steak drives it right through his heart, kills Dracula, turns the chick back to normal. The girl lives and she's cured, you know, so everybody's happy. Dracula's curse has been finally been lifted. Thanks to the fucking vampire slayer himself, Mr. Van Helsing. Hell yeah. Alright, so what else can I say but go check it out. If you haven't seen Universal's Dracula, it's definitely a must-see. If you're a horror film fan, you're a horror fan, you're a monster movie fan, whatever, and you haven't seen Dracula, definitely go check it out. You gotta see this one. It's a must watch. Go check out Universal's Dracula. Scott 86, Monster Mash 3. I hope y'all enjoyed this episode. Good night. <laughs> Scott 86's Monster Mash! <laughs>